So balancing redox reactions is very challenging. There's a lot of small components. One of the biggest ones is that when you start, you need to get rid of your spectator ions. If you're trying to balance a potassium permanganate or a 10 2 chloride, it's going to be a lot more challenging than if you can get to the point where we are now. The other thing is you're going to need to memorize what some of the products are. So permanganate is going to turn into Mn2 plus under acidic conditions. There's no way to predict that for a high school chemistry student or a college chemistry student. You just need to know that. Okay? Um, in this particular one, we have 10 2 plus. That can turn into 10 metal, or it can turn into 10 4 plus. So to figure out which one it's going to do, we would look at this one to see what's going on there. And I'm going to justify that in a second, why we know that that makes it turn into 10 4 plus. So the second thing you need to do is once you have your basic reactants and products set up, you need to split everything up into half reactions. And what that means is you need to take the chemicals that look like they go together and put them together. So permanganate goes with Mn2+. This is what this has turned into. Then you're going to balance just that reaction. So this is a uh, reduction. We're losing oxidation or we're seeing the oxidation state of this reduced. And so, and so we need to balance just, just this reduction half reaction. So to do that, when you're doing acidic conditions, you have H pluses and waters available to help you balance. So I would start by balancing my manganese. I have one of each, and I'm ignoring all the charges for right now. Then I would go through and balance all the other elements. For the oxygens, I would use four waters to give me four oxygens on both sides. Okay, so I've used that. Then I would take the H's and balance those with the H pluses. At this point, all of my elements are balanced. I've got one manganese on each side, four oxygens, and eight hydrogens on each side. The final thing that's really important is you have to balance your charge. And so in addition to these two things, you also have electrons available within your half reactions to balance the charge. And so I need the same charge on both sides. I've got two plus here, and I've got eight pluses and one minus here. So that's a difference of five. I'm going to put five electrons here. That gives me 5 minus, 8 plus, and minus. That's 2 plus on the left, and then 2 plus on the right. Okay. The 10, 2 plus, on the other hand, turning into 10, 4 plus is really simple to balance. We're just going to add two electrons here, and that's all we need. Okay. Now, the reason why we're adding these electrons is because we need to recombine the reduction half reaction with the oxidation half reaction to give a total equation. And when we do that, we need the charge to balance. And the easiest way to do that is to take these electrons that are exchanged and make them the same so that they cancel out. If we turn this into 10 electrons and we turn this into 10 electrons, then when we combine the two reactions, our charge will balance. Okay. So to do that, we're going to take this whole reaction and double everything. We're going to take this whole reaction and we're going to multiply everything by 5. Then we're going to add them all together. Okay. So we're going to take 2 times 8 H pluses to get 16 H pluses, and then 2 permanganates. And then down here we're going to have 5 10 2 pluses. And that's all our reactants. And then for our product, we're going to have 2 Mn2 pluses, 8 waters. done here, what you should know is that not only have we got 16 hydrogens, 2 manganese, 5 tins, and um, what, 8 oxygens on both sides, but our charges should add up. And so we have 16 pluses, 2 minuses, and 10 pluses. So total and total charge for the, for the reactant side, we are starting with 24 plus. 16 minus 2 is 14, plus 10, 24. On the other side, we have two 2 pluses and then five 4 pluses. Well, that's 20, and here's 4, and so we have 24 positive charges. So our charge has been conserved as well as our, as our mass, our atoms. And so that's really the two goals of balancing the redox reaction is to balance both. Now, if we go back to the beginning, I said that I would address the fact that the 10 2 becomes 10 4. The way that you know that is because you need to have an oxidation and a reduction. The whole core of this idea is that you're moving electrons from one thing to the other. So one thing has to give up the electrons, the other thing has to take them. 
So the ways to address that are to look at what's going on here. The permanganate we see is losing oxygen. And so that's historically how we define reduction. Uh, alternatively, we could assign oxidation states and say, well, this is a plus 7, and this is a plus 2. So that's being reduced, so then this number is going to need to go up. The charge on that's going to go up, so that the oxidation state is being oxidized, or that the 10, 2 plus is being oxidized. Okay? Uh, and that's how you would figure out this is going to turn into 10, 4 plus. If I turn this into 10 metal, now all of a sudden I need these two electrons over here. That doesn't make any sense. I can't balance that out. But that would be two examples of reduction. So it would be both things pulling electrons without anything to pull electrons from. Okay. That's how you go ahead and balance a redox reaction under acidic conditions. If you want to do basic conditions, it's, it's similar, but it's with hydroxides and waters, and then electrons in the half reactions. This is a little more challenging to balance because you have oxygens and hydrogens present in both. Um, and so if you want to see kind of a good tip I have for that, I have a link to balancing basic conditions for redox reactions below.